All right, so next order of business with uh, our project here on the CZ455 is installing an adjustable cheek rest. Uh, probably the most popular route to go for most shooters in our group, especially if you're uh, you know, going to be using this tactical stock, is to go with a saddle style cheek rest like this. Uh, these are primarily made out of Kydex, uh, which they also use for holsters, uh, knife sheaths, things like that. Uh, this particular one is from Matthews Fabrication. It's matthewsfabrication.com. He sells them on his website. Uh, he's also a member of Royal Shears of Utah. He's in southern Utah and also sells them on eBay. Um, these run $40 to $42. Um, I think he may have some of less than that, but that's kind of the standard for these cheek rests. Uh, great value. Now, this particular one probably isn't the most ideal for this application. Uh, because this is his Bell & Carlson model, which is wider, and the tactical stock is quite thin, uh, but these are flexible, so it should work fine. Um, I'll try it out. If it doesn't, we can certainly uh, heat it up or even send it to Matt and have him uh, just, you know, squeeze it in and really send it to the one that's a little thinner. Uh, but he does sell different options. Uh, he does sell some different designs. Uh, one advantage to Matt is that he will custom make these for you and he does have several different designs uh, for different kinds of applications. Whereas the other one that we've used in the past is the Southwest Precision, which is a little bit thicker, has different knobs on the bolts and things. Um, also extremely good, price is about the same. Um, they don't necessarily have custom options. Uh, either one is good. The one advantage that this one does have to the, to the uh, Southwest Precision, which the Southwest Precision is thicker, is this one being thinner does allow your face to get a little closer to the center line of the rifle, thus closer to the center line of the optic, and you know theoretically would uh, give you a little bit easier time of, uh, getting your eye relief right. So uh, what we're going to do is get this mounted onto the tactical. Um, as you saw, the stock is wood, so basically it's as simple as uh, deciding where you're going to drill your holes. Take a standard cordless drill. Uh, this happens to be a 3 16 drill bit, I believe. I'll double check on that. And uh, just drill your holes in the appropriate spot, run your bolts through, cinch it on, you're done. It's that simple. Uh, when I took this up and shot it, as you saw, definitely had some problems with the, the cheek weld on it. Uh, it was straining, it was hurting my neck from being in the position. I was shooting an elevated target. It was probably four or five feet higher than where I was laying. And uh, trying to do that, I'm trying to uh, get my face in a good position to see effectively through the scope. I was really starting to uh, uh, take its toll on my neck. Um, just within a few minutes, I was starting to feel uh, tired and sore muscles in my neck from being in that awkward position. It was also a lot more difficult to get the appropriate uh, uh, eye relief on the scope and get a nice clear picture of my target. Uh, so this is going to help out a ton. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, start getting this thing installed. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is uh, try to simulate your most common shooting position. Uh, so whether that be off of a bench, whether that be laying on the ground prone, however it might be, you want to mimic that position. Uh, what we want to do first is identify how far forward or back this is going to go. Um, now given that it is quite big or quite wide, um, you know, you've got a lot of flexibility. This isn't a, a rocket science. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pretend as if I'm shooting off a bench. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get in a good position. Um, oftentimes what you'll do here is, is close your eyes, get your face in position, open your eyes, and you want to be, you know, ideally if this was set up correctly, I would be able to have the right eye relief just by doing that. So I'm in a nice comfortable relaxed position. Now if I look up now, I'm way off. I've got to pick my head up. I've got to come back a little bit and get my proper eye relief. I'm also going to uh, zoom this out so the picture's really clear. So once I get comfortable, I've got the proper eye relief that I'm looking for. Um, I can kind of go ahead and just hold that where it is. Um, so obviously I've got it slid back a lot further than I probably want it. So I'm going to put it about right there. Do it again. And that feels about right, right there. So I'll hold it. That looks like a pretty good position for me. I don't think I'm going to be needing to get any further forward than that because I'm going to be really close to the scope. So I think that's a good position to have it in. Um, put my finger there. Uh, one thing you also want to notice is the tactical does have this little ridge. It drops down. 
Um, so you might want to be mindful of that. Probably don't want a ton of that hanging over, which we only have a little bit. So right there looks good to me. Um, so now what I want to do is mark in the slots here where I want to put my bolt. Um, you're going to want to put it as high up as you can. That way you've got as much travel as you can possibly get out of it. So I happen to have a Sharpie here, I think. Maybe. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and hold that in the position that I want it. And then come up and make a mark. In there. And then okay. Wow, that's really hard to see. I can see one there. Send it up. Make that one bigger as well. Should we use something besides a black marker on a black stock? All right. So that is pretty high up. Uh, you might want to make it a little lower just so you get into the meat of the stock, but I think we'll be fine where that's at. Um, so then what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, if you got a drill press, that'd be a great thing to use, but uh, I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and use the cordless drill, drill these holes through, and get it installed. All right, so the drill bit that I'm using is a uh, quarter inch. So pretty simple, and I'm pretty sure that's what these bolts are as well. Um, so once again, I have my two spots marked. Uh, what I've done is just kind of prop this up. Obviously, I don't have a fancy vise or anything. Uh, so what I've done so this doesn't turn into an epic fail video and drill a hole through my wife's nice table, uh, I've put a notebook underneath. Got a roll of uh, tape here, um, which reminds me. Actually should have taped this because a lot of times this finish will chip uh, when you drill it, but I guess we'll find out if it chips or not. <laughs> All right. So you think that's funny, buddy? So one key thing, obviously, you want to try to be as straight up and down and you know forward and back as you possibly can when you drill the holes. throw some tape on the other side just so it doesn't chip. Just gonna double check. Call me a worry work. Just want to make sure. Lesson learned right there. So the good news is I'm actually having this whole thing dipped, so not a biggie. But I will take and uh, let me go ahead and put some masking tape over here. Not sure if that'll help it or not on the back side. May or may not. Well, what the hell, we'll give it a shot. Should be somewhere in that neighborhood. See if that helps at all with a little test. I'm going to try and let the drill do the work, not push too hard. See if that doesn't help a little bit. And we're through. we 
got any chips with the tape on it. And we didn't, so put masking tape over it before you drill it. You won't have chips like that. So let's take and see if the bolts go through, and they do. So we'll get this stuff out of the way. Alright, so now that we have the uh, holes drilled here, we'll go ahead and throw on the cheek rest. Um, one thing to keep in mind, uh, this is going to be for a right-handed shooter. Um, so your cheek is going to be on the left side of the rifle. So you're not going to want to put these uh, knobs on that side. They're going to interfere with your cheek, so you're going to put them on this side. So you're going to run the bolt in from the side your cheek is going to go on through the other side. Uh, most often these bolts are too long, so you can take a Dremel and cut them off uh, to make them the right length. So we'll go ahead and... Other thing I'll take note of is the top of the bolt there does have a square portion right below the head, so that'll actually lock into the uh, square cut slot here on the cheek rest. So I'll go ahead and pop that guy through. This one back here. Pop it through as well. I'm going to take and screw on the stiff going on there. And these are definitely way too long so I'll grab my Dremel and cut probably at least a quarter inch more off of it. Yeah they're way too long. Alright I've got my Dremel here with a metal cutting blade and I've got the bolts marked. Go ahead and try to carefully uh, Cut them off. I'm wearing eye protection. I definitely do that when you're doing this kind of stuff. And let's go ahead and make this happen. Alright, so I uh, just got done in the basement with the Dremel, uh, chopping off the bolts. I uh, took about a quarter inch off of these. Um, so what we'll do is go ahead and wrap this up. Um, cheek piece on. Once again, the uh, bolt side is going to be the side where your cheek's going to go, which is a right-handed shooter. It's going to be the uh, right side of your cheek and the left side of the rifle. So go ahead and push these through. screws here. Feels good. Test it out, see if it's a good fit, and then adjust from there until uh, I get the proper eye relief that I'm looking for. So there's our uh, cheap piece upgrade.